Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be doing a guide on all of the rocket launchers available to the engineer class. This includes the anti-air rocket launchers. Through my own testing and also some good data collection from forum user Labby on Simthic.com, which I will put a link to in the video description, I have a lot of really good information about the rocket launchers and which ones are good for which situations, which ones you may want to pick up and use more frequently. Let's start off with the MBT Law. This rocket launcher is one of the lowest damage per shot rocket launchers available, doing approximately 21 damage to a heavily armored tank. It will auto-target ground targets, so you basically just shoot at the target and when the rocket gets close enough it kind of veers straight up and then straight down to do its 21 damage it doesn't matter what angle you hit a tank from this can actually be a disadvantage if your target is hiding underneath a bridge when the rocket auto veers up it will actually hit the bridge instead of detonating on the armor some of the benefits of this rocket launcher are that it has zero rocket drop so you can fire directly at your target no matter what your distance is it also has a very fast reload of 3.3 seconds unfortunately that doesn't make up for just the super low damage per shot it can also be chained with lock-on devices like a soflam or a PLD to hit air vehicles uh, or just ground vehicles that you don't have line of sight on this however does not change the overall damage output overall I can't recommend this rocket launcher it just doesn't do enough damage despite some of its other interesting benefits Next up we have the classic RPG. This is a very straightforward rocket launcher. You point, you shoot, the rocket flies in a somewhat straight line, you reload, you fire again. It can be used against ground or air depending on your skill and your ability to track moving targets. Its main competitor is the small. Some of the benefits that this offers over the small is a slightly faster reload time of 4.8 seconds versus the small's 5 seconds. And it also does about 14% more damage than the small which can really actually aid in taking down helicopters or tanks a little bit faster. The downside is that the velocity of the rocket is about 20% slower than the small and it also has more rocket drop which can definitely make hitting long range targets much more challenging. If you like to engage ground targets at close or even medium range then this is certainly the rocket launcher for you. And taking a quick look at the small, the direct competitor, it does have that slightly longer reload time of 5 seconds which isn't really a big deal. The rocket velocity is considerably faster than an RPG and it also has less rocket drop. So if you're the kind of person that likes to be a real surgeon with your rockets then this might be the rocket launcher for you if you also like to take a lot of shots at passing by helicopters or airplanes then this is definitely going to be a little bit faster and a little bit more accurate. Personally, it's one of my favorite rocket launchers as it really just gives me an option to deal with pretty much any threat on the battlefield. Now let's take a look at the SRA. This is an interesting rocket launcher because it requires you to guide the rocket as it's flying through the air, unless of course you are using it as a lock-on rocket launcher. So it has that dual capability of uh, being manually fired or locking on to a SOFLAM or laser designated target. It does a little bit more damage than a small, a little bit less damage than an RPG. It does have a very fast reload of 2.8 seconds. The thing you have to remember though is that you're guiding the rocket while it's in flight, whereas a dumb fire rocket launcher, you can reload uh, your rocket launcher while the rocket's still in flight. So that's basically why it has a much faster reload than other rocket launchers. Overall, you're not going to be chaining rockets any faster with a SRAW than you would with a dumb fire rocket launcher. Using this rocket launcher to track distant targets or even air targets like the AC-130 or transport helicopters is a very good way to take air vehicles out without them knowing that a rocket is after them because it doesn't give them the lock-on sound. This is definitely a very high-skilled weapon. It can be very useful for taking out air vehicles or tanks that are very far away on a big open map. It's fun to use, but just remember you have to stand there the whole time while you're guiding your rocket into its target, and that can leave you very excited exposed to snipers or pretty much anybody to sneak up on your position. It should also be noted that when firing at a laser designated tank this has the potential of doing up to 55 damage so you can two shot a laser designated tank and that is definitely something to consider when working with teammates. Next up we have the Javelin rocket launcher which is a lock on requirement to hit ground targets. You have to maintain the lock all the way through the projectile's flight unless it is laser designated. If it is laser designated this is the only rocket launcher that actually receives a damage boost for laser designated targets and it does a huge amount of damage. 
you can easily two-shot a tank with a laser lock. If it's not locked, you will be doing about 30 damage to a tank, which means it's almost a three-shot kill on a tank provided that you are guiding the rocket yourself with no laser designation. The Javelin is an interesting rocket launcher. I recommend using it on big, wide open maps where you can maintain line of sight on your target for a long period of time. Otherwise, you're just going to essentially lose the lock and end up wasting a lot of your ammo. On its own, the Javelin is an okay rocket launcher, but when working with teammates that are using laser designation, it can become phenomenal, knocking air targets out of the sky with ease. It should also be noted that at one point in time, you are able to do a little combo where you could get two rockets flying in the air and then lock a target and both rockets would hit at the same time essentially destroying it or disabling it very quickly this was a cool combination but it is no longer possible to do is when you fire your second rocket the first rocket now disappears this also applies to the straw now let's take a look at the anti-air rocket launchers the igla in many ways is very similar to the javelin it's just intended for air targets so you can lock onto air targets without any sort of laser designation it'll do about 35 damage to an attack helicopter and you have to maintain your lock all the way through the projectile's flight path. The cool thing about the Igla, and this can also be replicated with something like the Javelin, it's just a little less common, is that if a air vehicle pops their countermeasures and your rocket breaks its lock, you can reacquire the lock without having to fire a new missile. The same missile will veer back and hit the target. This is a very cool way to not only conserve ammo, but basically get through air vehicles countermeasures. As you'll see right here, I just reacquired the lock, the rocket comes back and hits the attack helicopter. The Igla has the longest lock on range of any rocket launcher at 450 meters. Again, maintaining the lock through the flight path is a little bit tricky, especially if there's infantry on the ground near you, this can make it difficult to stay alive while you're waiting for your rocket to reach its target. Luckily it has one of the fastest rocket speeds in the game, doubling the speed of the Stinger missile, so your rocket should get to its target relatively fast. And speaking of the Stinger, this is the fire and forget version of the Igla. Basically you don't have to maintain your lock, so you shoot, you reload, it has the exact same reload speed as an Igla, except that you don't have to maintain the lock. So essentially you can chain rockets much quicker with the Stinger than you can with the Igla. It also has the exact same damage as the Igla. So in theory, provided that your target does not countermeasure, you can actually put out way more damage with the Stinger. And personally, I prefer the Stinger to the Igla just because being able to fire and forget allows me to stay alive a lot longer on the ground, potentially deal with infantry threats while my rocket is seeking out its target and that's a huge part of battlefield on any sort of conquest server when you're looking up at the sky it's a great opportunity for infantry to sneak in and take you out as for dealing with ground targets i really do love the SMA just because it's so versatile it's even good for taking out air targets the SRA is also a really great rocket launcher if you're looking to try and work on a rocket launcher getting good with it for a long period of time it does take a uh, a dedicated person to master the aiming of the straw but once you get it down it can be one of the best rocket launchers in the game now there's a whole ton of info dealing with damage reload speeds rocket travel speed all that kind of stuff and it is located in the Symphic forums. Again, I'm gonna put that link in the video description if you really wanna get into the nitty gritty details of every single rocket launcher. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.